Lines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson Navigation, serving Guam and Micronesia for 20 years. The all-new 2018 Kona by Hyundai, available at Cars Plus. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Ahead on primetime, students taking action against guns and violence on their campuses. Carmen Talahi with a look at today's rallies. Plus, more than a couple of dozen people displaced after a house fire in Dededo. Keanu Mendiolo shows us efforts underway to help them get back on their feet. And public health inspectors cracking down on yet another business into winning details of what they found coming up. Half a day and good evening. On this day, 19 years ago, our nation was in shock, grieving the loss of 12 students and a teacher from Columbine High School killed by two students carrying loaded weapons. We've seen countless mass tragedies since. Today, our very own students march in protest, hoping that tragedies like these never happen in their hallways. Carmen Talai has our top story. While you guys fought and fought so that we wouldn't take your guns away, your guns have been taking us away one by one. So this is where it ends. This is weird generation change and we won't tolerate incompetence in our Senate or anywhere else. Calling themselves generation change. GW students want peace in schools across the nation. Trisha Kunlasa Jr. says the rally was organized by students in light of national headlines of countless school shootings. We want to um, give our opinions on uh, um, the shootings that are happening in the United States and worldwide. Though many of these students weren't born on this tragic day in 1999, when two students brought guns and killed a dozen at Columbine High, Joseph St. Nicholas does remember the school shootings that came after. The first school shooting I remember was Sandy Hook, and just hearing that news really um, had, a, had a huge effect on me because... I just couldn't imagine the um, terror and horror that they had to go through. When asked if he was afraid a school shooting can occur on campus, he says there's other types of violence that plagues Guam's public schools on a case-by-case -case basis. Worries with past incidents like the shooting at the Guam Adventist Clinic 16 years ago. It has happened here before, and just because it happened once, it doesn't mean that it will not happen again. So there's always a possibility. Hopefully it's a very small possibility that it will happen, but we just wanted to raise awareness. So. Um, we want to ensure that our schools here on Guam are of safe zone and that um, we as students will feel safe while we're in their classrooms, while we're inside um, basically our school. Awareness that is being raised nationally on top of the youngsters from GW. As you can see behind me, seasoned high school students are here to wave for peace and school safety. Also remembering the lives of those that were lost to gun violence in schools. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Trilahi. Meanwhile, senators entertain testimony on a bill meant to prevent a school shooting tragedy here. The measure by Vice Speaker Teresa Lahi bans so-called bump stock firearm attachments that can increase firing rates to mimic automatic capabilities. The bill finds that they can turn a firearm into machine gun, which is prohibited under Guam law. A bump stock attached was used in the worst ever mass shooting in Las Vegas last year. The bill drawing passionate testimony from both sides of the gun rights debate. The Second Amendment has had nothing to do with this. Bump stocks have had nothing to do with this. The children that were killed in Florida were not killed with a bump stock. They were killed by an insane young man that the local police department and sheriff's department had been notified about multiple times by their family that they were in trouble. The FBI knew it. Nobody, nobody took action as a gun owner, this, I don't feel threatened. I don't own a bump stock. I'm not interested in owning a bump stock. Um, I understand that this is for the benefit of the community, and I think that as a father, as a, you know, I, I have a family, I feel that the needs of the community and the safety of the community outweighs the needs of gun owners on Guam to own a bump stock device. Senator Chilahi's bill also increases the prison time for illegal firearms possession from three to five years. It also raises the fines from $1,000 to $10,000.
Meanwhile, another measure drew the strong support of gun rights advocates. It expands gun laws by providing stand your ground jurisdiction justifications. Rather, it would allow gun owners to defend themselves anywhere in the face of imminent danger. Nestor Lacanto reports. Bill sponsored Senator Joe S. and Augustine says it's an extension of the so-called castle doctrine that a person is justified in defense of his home or castle. He says Guam is becoming more dangerous and people need to be able to defend themselves outside their homes too. Get out of the land! Die! We've got people going after people with machetes, approaching people in their cars. Uh, it's, it's getting ridiculous and unfortunately, you know, we're not going to blame the police department because they're great folks. They just can't be everywhere. But the people of Guam need to be able to give, be given the opportunity to stand their ground. San Augustine says this is not open season for gun owners, nor will it promote indiscriminate use of deadly force. He says those laws for the use of firearms don't change. It does not give you the license to, to kill. And if anybody thinks it is, they're going to jail. And you know, the, the prosecutors at the Attorney General's office would have a, a field day in court proving that number one, you do not have the right, you did not justify the shooting, you're going to jail. It is not to open up the Wild Wild West here in Guam. St. Augustine says it just addresses concerns by licensed legitimate gun owners over protection for exercising their Second Amendment rights. You feel your life is threatened? Your family's threatened, you have a right to defend yourself. And everybody has that right today, but there's no law actually protecting them. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. $47,000, that's how much the family of the late Brian Cruz wants his attacker to pay in restitution. Late last year, Jace White was convicted with the aggravated assault of Cruz. Cruz, who was knocked unconscious, was would never wake up from his sleep. According to court filings, the victim racked up a hefty hospital bill, $24,000 in intensive care unit and a ten grand in the emergency room. As reported, White was sentenced to two and a half years in jail but remains free, a free man pending his appeal. The quick thinking victim memorized the license plate of the suspect's car. That's how this duo was busted in Monday's purse snatching on JFK Hill. When police traced the plates, it led them to straight to Jose Juan Sanchez Rojas and Dion Neely Richard. Court documents state the duo needed cash to buy drugs. Rojas, who was also arrested for crystal meth recovered from the Tumont home, told police he's been trying to quit but has developed an addiction to the drug. That's when he planned the heist, Rojas allegedly driving the car while Richard pulled the victim's purse. They were pulled over for a de defective headlight, but busted for drugs. When officers pulled over this trio on Wednesday, they couldn't sit still. Court documents state all three occupants showed common indicators of being under the influence of a controlled substance. The driver, Cannon Chamberlain, also couldn't stop sweating. The search of his person revealed syringes, improvised glass pipes with drug ice, and a Ziploc baggie with pills and more crystal meth. He told police the pills were Vicodin and that the passenger, Jalen Cabby, was also busted with the drug ice and marijuana. Chamberlain and Cabby are joined by Wilbert DeVellis, who was also in the car and placed under arrest. Well, picking up the pieces, a house fire in Dededo on Wednesday left 31 people without a home. As Keanu Mandela reports, the families who shared the home are looking to the community for help so they can rebuild. An unexpected Wednesday afternoon. Guam firefighters responded to two fires in Dedido. While one was on an abandoned structure, the other, a home shared by six families, including children. Cynthia Tither's in-laws were staying in the home just next door. They noticed that the, the bed is the one who, on fire. But they tried to put out the, the bed outside, but cannot because there's like the, like the, I don't know if the, the nails or what. Mm -hmm. it's, so they just live like that. We try to call on 911, but uh, they're so late to came. Yeah. That's why we they're lost there. Um. The cause of the fire still remains under investigation, but luckily all members were able to get away unharmed. However, everything else was destroyed. Everything like their uh, wallet or uh, their money, their bags, their passports. Their social security card, their birth certificate, everything like that, it's burned out 
on the fire. The fire even reached their only vehicle, taking away their sole method of transportation. The families are still currently staying on the property with tents and supplies donated by the Dedido Mayor's Office and the American Red Cross. The Dedido Mayor's Office has started a donation fund for the family if community members would like to donate. Clothing, uh, if like tent, uh, household, uh, especially I think the transportation, <laughs> mm -hmm. if someone want to donate because the, the family lost their transportation. They accept donation for that mm -hmm. if someone wants to help out. Only ash and rubble remains where six families share their dwelling. The Dedido Mayor's Office and the families kindly ask the public to help and donate in any way that they can. If you would like to donate, you can contact the family at 987-6493. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Keone Mendiola. Now to a health alert. Public Health confirming they shut down Elite Bakery and its retail store in Tumwinning. Most concerning of the findings, rodent bait feedings, a live cockroach and multiple dead roaches throughout the facility. Health inspectors also finding 30 gaps and holes leading to the garbage outside. This resulting in an active rodent and roach infestation. Other demerits include garbage littered all across the floor, dark stained tiles and improper handling of food. You can view the full report on KUAM.com. We'll stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience KUAM news than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM news app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming, KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. Half the day, I'm in the club. Half the day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half the day, I'm in the club. Now you can choose your favorite Nissan rides and 30 flyaways on Philippine Airlines when you play Micronesia Mall's Your Best Choice Giveaway. To play, present mall receipts to win a new Versa Note SR, the Crossover Rogue Sport SV, the Heritage Edition 370Z, or you can choose a tough Nissan truck. Plus, there are great instant prizes from Burger King and Foot Locker. Win more cars, trips, and prizes when you play Micronesia Mall's Your Best Choice Giveaway. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Welcome back. Another 320 H2B foreign worker petitions are approved by USCIS. This brings the number of new approvals to 650 in the past month. They are authorized under a special provision of the NDAA that allows up to 4,000 workers a year specifically for military build-up related projects. Governor Calvo is saying it's good news for the industry, the economy, and the government's fiscal stability. In a statement, he also expressed cautious optimism that similar approvals will begin for civil civilian projects. After nearly two years of nearly 100 percent petition denials, a dozen local companies and the Contractors Association successfully sued the federal government to force a return to previous policy when temporary skilled labor petitions were routinely approved. The hospital board approved an array of fee increases during Thursday night's board meeting. The GMH Board of Trustees has since reviewed the list of new fees and the updated professional fees, which went up for a public hearing last month. The 98 new fee items impact pediatrics, pharmacy, the operating room, and special services. You can view the complete list of the fee increases on our website. Meantime, GMH continues to wait for the response from the Joint Commission on Accreditation after submitting its corrective action plan. Pika, no, not the Chamorro term for hot or spicy, short for Pacific Islands Cohort on Cardiometabolic Health. This group of local health professionals are looking to gather data that could tell us 
that could help us live longer. Crystal Paco has more. What's killing Guamanians? Cardiovascular disease, then cancer followed by stroke, respiratory disease, and diabetes. While we have data on cancer, thanks to the Cancer Registry, University of Guam's Dr. Yvette Paulino says we don't know much about the other leading causes of death. We currently don't have any incidence data on cardiovascular disease or diabetes in Guam. That's where the Pacific Islands Cohort on Cardiometabolic Health Study comes in, or PICA for short. They're looking for young children and their parents to participate in their study. The purpose of PICA is to collect long-term um, information from families. A child has to be born in Guam um, or Pompeii, so we're doing this with Pompeii between January 2010 and December 2014. And then a parent of the child will also be invited to participate. And the, the parent has to be between 18 and 50 years of age. What can participants expect? Three visits with the PICA team in a two-week period for questionnaires, labs, and measurements. So one of the um, things we make them wear in the first visit is an accelerometer. So they get an accelerometer. It's almost like a Fitbit. So the parent and the child wears it, and it just tracks their physical activity. It's almost like a Fitbit, your steps, your physical activity, when you're sleeping. But they can't see anything on it. The only way to get the information is to return it to us so that we can download it into our system, and then we can actually reap the results from that. What are researchers so, looking for? But we're looking at everything from culture, diet, environmental exposure, occupational exposure. For women, we're looking at reproductive history. We also want to look at sleep patterns, physical activity, screen time, um, and so forth. We also want to be able to do some of uh, future studies on possibly genetics, whether or not uh, Pacific Islanders have a predisposition to diabetes and heart disease. Findings will give health professionals an idea of just how bad these diseases are and how best to combat them. We know that the youngest patient with diabetes is less than 10 years of age, but that's just because this individual is a patient at the dialysis center. But we really don't collect that type of information from you. The parent and child will be compensated a total of $100 in gift certificates. They can also choose to participate in the study long term. Call 686-3426 or 3697, or email PICCAH at triton.uog.edu for more information. You can also find them on Facebook. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Crystal Paco. It's a mock crime scene. The suspect's fingerprints visible on the CD and a soda can. The Guam Police Department teamed up with the Federal Bureau of Investigations this week for trainings in evidence gathering, scene investigation, and evidence control. GPD Sergeant Paul Tapal. It's crucial because of the fact that, um, you know, evidence is presented and of course it, it comes into a science and, uh, you know, the burden of proof does fall on behalf of the government and whenever you preserve um, evidence and whenever you're, um, you can lift um, latent prints and of course preserve DNA, that's presentable in case in any court or any uh, court proceedings. So it helps with the officers in their investigation and of course it helps us um, bring forth prosecution in any investigation. Participants included detectives from Highway Patrol, the Criminal Investigation Division, as well as crime scene technicians. Well, after two days of discussion and developing solutions, Pacific NGO leaders of the 8th Annual Micronesia Nonprofit Congress met with Guam senators to present what they compiled from their conference. Pacific Islands Forum Secretaries, Secretariat Advisor Penny Sona Napoto spoke of the seriousness of climate change. Seeing an evolving uh, security threats, not only through climate change, but there's been um, increasing cases of um, unreported, unregulated, you know, fisheries that's happening that's come through also promoting lots of like um, um, transnational crimes um, and, then, and other security threats. We're also seeing um, an increase in terms of uh, our environment degradation through climate change. And, and then we see that as a threat now we're asking uh, how does how do these threats you know uh, speak to the solidarity of the Pacific blue continent as a whole <coughs> so based on this uh, we wanted to mirror that against you know what civil society not as individual groups but as a sector as a regional sector could partner with governments to ensure that we bring security to this region 
we know our region is basically viewed by countries outside this region as an empty playing field. And we know what's going to happen if security is unmanaged outside our region. And the need for community togetherness to address the pressing issues of westernization, substance abuse, and sexual health, as stated by uh, the board member uh, Zita Pangalinen. We're recognizing also the impact of colonization and Western with the effects of substance abuse issues, as well as sexual health, not only to the community at large, but the LGBTQ population. It is also recognized that there is a need to create safe space to address topics such as these within different levels of community, such as families and public organizations. The Pazuta Forum is a way to bridge the conversation between public and private leaders. Visiting representatives will make similar presentations with their local policymakers. The conference will continue through Monday. Well, it started with a list of exemplary teachers, but only one will be Teacher of the Year. This hour, DOE is holding their annual Teacher of the Year gala, where stakeholders and teachers wait in anticipation to find out who will be the next Teacher of the Year. To find out more about these incredible teachers who are impacting the lives of students across the island, you can log on to KUAM.com. And are you a University of Guam student in need of some financial assistance? The Rotary International District 2750 Service Organization is awarding a $10,000 scholarship to one UOG student within their last 60 credit hours of their undergraduate program. Applicants must be from the FSM, CNMI, Guam, or a Palau citizen. Deadline to apply, May 4th. For more information, you can visit our website. Well, sports is next. To keep it here. It's back. The Smartphone Super Sale Event. Enjoy huge savings on our most popular Samsung Galaxy smartphones. But this offer won't last long. So drop into a GTA store today. On now at Cars Plus, and you're going to save big with cash back on every purchase. Get to Cars Plus and shop our great selection of Hyundai Santa Fe's, Tucson's, and the all new Kona, Guam's most affordable SUV, or our full line of Jeeps like a new Jeep Renegade, save six grand, or a new Jeep Cherokee, save 4,500 with rates as low as 1.99% APR for qualified buyers. It's Cars Plus, mighty, mighty SUV mega sale. Cars Plus, driven by you. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. It's Friday, so you know how we do it. We're going to hop in the ride, roll on over to the newly renovated Dyrantone and Dedido for your Athlete of the Week. Check it out. We're here at Dye Rent's home, Daddy Doe, for our Athlete of the Week. Today we have Guam Rugby Club player Ratu. Congratulations on Dye Rent's Athlete of the Week. Who will you be donating this check to? I'd like to donate this uh, check to uh, Guam Rugby Club. Facing Paratodu on uh, this year's championship game of the Budweiser True Grit Rugby Series, a team that you guys are pretty familiar with. Yes. Uh, past few years we've been challenging uh, Paratodu in the finals and it was hard for us, and last year we had a last-minute try, and we won the tournament. And this year we had, I told the boys, no more chances, let's go all the way. Yeah, this year's championship game was a lot different than previous games. Picking up the win 38-0, to zero, using your speed this year. Yes, speed was, most of the guys had a lot of speed, and 
it really helped us a lot this year because last year we, we barely had speed. Ten aside is a lot different than 15 aside. A little bit more technique involved. Can you tell us the difference between uh, playing 10 aside and, and 15 aside that you guys are used to in, on the national team? Uh, 10 aside is m more spaces, so it's more likely just to spread the ball around. And for 15s, it's more like a crash game and strategy. What's next for the men's national team? I know you've been part of the program for uh, quite some time. Yes, uh, next, uh, Guam national team is traveling to Brunei for... To us in the Mats and Management team, because what it says is we're here to stay. It's a real physical manifestation of our commitment to this region. It's so important that we hire locally, we develop talent locally, we train locally. What's been a wonderful addition to our approach there is that many of the people who started off in Guam have gone off into significant leadership roles elsewhere in the company. This is our headquarters here in Guam in Micronesia. And when we talk about putting down our roots, it's not just doing business, it's about everything we do with our friends, our customers, and our employees. I believe that nobody can replicate what we do, and that's why we have such a great team and such a great service and why we're successful. This is our home, this is our life, and we're happy to make a difference in everyone else's life. Guam is more than a tiny island in the Pacific. This magical place is where I call home. This island. Kato, we love you from Mom, Dad, Nala, De Nancy, Peter, and Patrick. Raquel Kea, happy first birthday. Love Mommy, Daddy, and the Familia. Riley Mongrobang, happy second birthday coming from Uncle Jerry, Nina Joyce, Alyssa, and AJ. Annette Delgado, happy birthday from Luna and the family, and happy belated birthday to April.